listening to Movie Reviews and More with Brian Sebastian, only on L.A. Talk Radio. <laughs> That's funny. This is Brian Sebastian, Movie Reviews and More, live around the world. Thank you, Denver. Je uh, well, I said Denver. Well, Denver, <laughs> too. Like Denver. I meant to say Germany, Sweden, Sweden. Denmark, UK, Spain, and Colombia. We have to say hi to all of our countries out there, which is great. And, and New York. New York's basically another country. Uh, right? Well, yes, of course, <laughs> New York, obviously. I want to thank Alan Cliff for coming, Andrew Bell for coming, our photographers, which is really, really good. I'm going to have everybody introduce themselves, starting with Brett Bauer. Go ahead. You were going to take a drink or something, <laughs> but go ahead. Brett, tell us who you are, where you come from. Um, my name is Brett Bauer. I'm from New York. I live here in Los Angeles. been here for about 10 years. I uh, currently work for Celsius, and um, I also coach clients with emotional eating. Susan Post. I'm Susan, from originally from Canada, working with Provincial Vodka here in Los Angeles, and glad to be here. And volleyball player, too. Absolutely. Volleyball player, absolutely. Rich, tell us where you're from. Uh, Rich McCain. I'm from originally from Omaha, Nebraska. I live here in Los Angeles. I'm a syndicated entertainment columnist. Sylvia. Hello, my name is Sylvia Cal. I'm from Spain. That's why I have an accent. <laughs> and I'm an actress and a TV host. But more important, I have a peer agency called SGG Public Relations, and we represent actors, uh, models, uh, artists. Sean. I'm Sean Waldron. I'm here to promote uh, No Hate Snowflake Pens, uh, anti-hate throughout America. And uh, also, I'm a very emotional eater. <laughs> <laughs> Julie. <Are we> all? <laughs> you get a client. <laughs> Julie. I'm Julie Rocha from Long Beach, California. I am a personal trainer and holistic healer. Okay, so I've never had seven people before. Actually, there was going to be an eighth, but uh, there's no room. So what people don't realize is that I'm booked until January 2nd, so I'm glad that everybody's come in because nobody wants to cancel. And I'm glad that Brett came back because you haven't been here in a while. You've been busy, but you've been fighting to get here. Yes, yeah, see, she's, uh, she's that happy. <laughs> and also, I got to thank TreeSisters.com. She's one of our sponsors. Claire DeBall will be here October 24th from London. I uh, look forward to having her. Oksana Grishina will be here November 28th, Miss Olympia, for umpteenth time, which is great, and Miss Arnold Classic around the world, which is good. So I want to make sure that we get all these digs in for everybody coming. And we have Celsius, but you know what? Let's start with Sylvia. Ooh. Talk about where you came from, because we just found each other. Through what? Through Cat, Cat Lopez, Cat Lopez TV, from one of Columbia. my other Columbia. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, where I come from? Well, I come from Spain. I from Madrid. I've been here for seven years. I lived in New York for a year, and I am in love with this city, with Los Angeles. So I think I'm just gonna stay here forever. <laughs> <laughs> and you also model too, don't you? Yes, I do model. Actually, I model. Well, one of the last companies was these bracelets called Bella Bojo, they're from Miami, and they're Latinos too. So um, yeah, I model for many brands, and, and I act, and I'm a TV host. And you've graced a lot of covers too. Talk about some of the covers you've been on, and your clients. <laughs> well, I've been in many covers, like the last one was called Voz Magazine from uh, Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. uh, I was named the GQ Woman of the Week. <laughs> well, I didn't know that one. Okay. <laughs> wow. Brian, weren't you the GQ? Uh, no, I've okay. never been there. I'm, uh, I'm more <laughs> QG. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and I want to thank all these magazines for having me either on their covers or inside. And I, our clients in SDG Public Relations, we get them in the press. Mm. Uh, they are always very happy. You can check our Instagram on SDG Public Relations. And uh, yeah, you can see all the covers our clients get, all our models and our amazing actors. And, and what's your website? We don't have a, web a website yet because nowadays everybody check your Instagram instead. So yeah, that's but true. We'll build one. So what's your number on Instagram? My following, uh -huh. well, my personal one in Sylvia Cal one is uh, 30,000.5. Okay. Um, and for my PR agency, I don't work on that Instagram as much, so it's like a thousand and something. Yeah, you're starting it, yes. Yeah. yeah it's not that easy. How, how long has the PR agency been about? Sorry? How long have you had the PR agency? For three years now. I was working for another PR agency before, uh, and now my own for like three years. 
Cool. Where are you located in Los Angeles? In Hollywood. In Hollywood. Yeah. Cool. Rich, talk about where we met. What are you doing these days? And what interviews and what movies you've been seeing? Well, we've been working together forever. <laughs> and uh, we met at a press j uh, junket. And, and I invite him to all my things because yeah. I like his outlet. I like what he does. And people really respect you when you're doing your interviews. And uh, Brian throws some good parties. I mean, he's <laughs> had some spectacular parties. And I've never been can, invited. Yeah, as, as you can see right here, this is just a microcosm of what, what he does when he's in a club. So if, if he throws a party, you had better be there. <laughs> And I work with, um, I interview actors, uh, musicians, and I get to go to concerts, get backstage. Um, and you broke into a lot, of, uh, a lot of music artists too, because at one point you were in the music industry. Yeah. Talk about that. Well, I had a record label at one time, and I wasn't funded the way I needed to be, but it was a, it was a lot of fun. And uh, you know, LA is a place where a lot of artists, I happen to be, on the strip, I had a, a rock band at one time that I was managing, and uh, during that period, the bands that were signed was Guns N' Roses. Ooh. They used to open. I mean, uh, they used to ask me to open for my band, and there was Striper, uh, Rat, uh, uh, you you name it. Uh, a black guy doing heavy metal. Yeah, There's two yeah. of us. I would go to the club, and they would assume that I was the bodyguard. Because I was black. Uh -huh, see? But, but I'm I not would, kidding. I would wear a three piece suit. Uh, man, I met everybody David Lee Roth, you name them. I met them all. Uh, Night Ranger, it, it goes on and on. And uh, and then I've done a lot of R&B. So I managed Gladys Horton at one time, the original lead singer of the Marvelettes. Please, Mr. Postman. Sean, you remember them? And, no. um, you know, <laughs> a couple of Motown acts worked with them. So. Yeah, I've been around a little while. Were you traveling with them, with the rock band? Uh, well, the rock, my rock band was pretty nice because usually it's, uh, my experience is when the leadership is cool, then the band is cool. And um, I know several managers that had problems with their bands because they were wild as well. So, but it was a good experience. I, I really enjoyed it. And was your your instrument the triangle? <laughs> <laughs> no, I play keyboards. Actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> <It's Brian. laughs> I'll not talk about Brian again, but That's he also right. plays the recorder. He play hard. I know. I'm a drummer. Player. We bang harder. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, talk about you know we un unfortunately we're having a good time, but we just had a catastrophe this weekend, which is very very sad in Las Vegas. But again. Uh, you created these no hate buttons, and you created it for. This is just one of the reasons why you created it, right? Talk about that. Well, yeah, I created the no hate buttons uh, snowflake. Yep. No hate buttons because back in December, uh, Steve Bannon and his uh, uh, organization were, um, in a sense, calling those who don't believe in their ideology as snowflakes, and their uh, representation of snowflakes is uh, weak and significant. Uh, and anyone that doesn't agree with it, with their ideology. So that's why I put the snowflake on the pen to say that uh, the snowflake is beautiful, it's unique, it's independent, uh, when combined with other snowflakes that can form a very strong and powerful force. And I'm very proud to say I am a snowflake. I'm a snowflake too. Yeah. So. So I made the pens. Uh, Here's the snowflake. <laughs> I'm a snowflake. <laughs> I think I drank mine. And we so. have to talk what we're drinking. We're actually drinking Susan. What are we drinking here? Provincial vodka. vodka. From where? Like no other vodka. And what did it award did it win this year? Uh, wow, so many awards. The Gold in the Sip Awards. Yep, mm -hmm. um, I'm taking a sip right now. Silver at the Global Spirit Awards. Uh, previously won gold at the World Wine and Spirit Awards in New York. Yep. How many times is it distilled? Seven times. Oh. Seven yeah. times. Is that, is that good? Seven <laughs> times? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So let's hear, yeah. hear Sean. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, um, I kind of I saw this coming, uh, no heat, snowflake uh, situation where I've seen a lot of uh, white supremacists popping up last year. Uh, they think they have a voice now. Uh, and I think the majority uh, is going to drown that voice eventually. So you're seeing more more aggressiveness uh, coming out of these types of people. 
and um, I just think we have to be aware of that and fight that. Uh, just like in <coughs> Las Vegas, unfortunately, um, you know, the first thing the mayor said was uh, this man had a lot of hate in him, and evidently he did. Uh, and there's a lot of ways, I mean, you can protect yourself when it comes to people who are out there trying to shoot you, and the first thing you want to do is to uh, run away. You want to hide, and then the last resort is to fight, take action. Because if you barricade yourself into a room, they don't want to take the time to kick down the door. They want easy targets. Right. So they're, they're looking for the next shot. So that's what you have to do. You gotta hide, you gotta barricade. And if they do get in, just throw anything you can at them. Because that'll stop them, hopefully. So. And what's your button? She created a bigger button. Because when we talked, I said, it's gotta be bigger. bigger I got the gotta bigger, bigger button, a bigger button. And, and it's a big button. And it's right here, and I got a smaller one. Then I'm getting a one-inch button, which is the in-between. And um, so um, I think that um, uh, I've given uh, quite a bit of pins away since December, thousands of them. And um, I uh, did uh, send a few to the White House, and Michelle Obama uh, sent me a, a nice little note. And um, I told her what it's all about. You can show the note. I'm not oh. sure if it'll show up too well. But no, I can read it. it. I can read it. Go it's ahead. from Michelle Obama, and it says, uh, your message uh, made its way to me. And, I, of course, she doesn't sound like me. <laughs> can, you, can you say how it, she would sound? <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Give uh, a shot. Your message made its way to me, and I want to thank you for uh, writing. Barack and I are excited to stand alongside you as we continue the work of shaping the future we know is possible. And I have always believed in the power of voices like yours to drive our nation forward, and I hope you'll stay engaged on the issues you care about. And I thank you again. I wish you the very best. Sincerely, Michelle Obama. So, you know, her staff sent this to me, and she did get the purple folder. That's when you send something, and if it makes it in the purple folder and it gets to her, then you get a note. So I'm very... That's right. I didn't know about, about the purple that. folder. That's that's impressive. Yeah, it's, you have, it has to go into a, a little folder that gets to them. Uh, the other thing is, is that I was going through some old, an old box in 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 the garage, and I found this one uh, document from the president of the United States with the seal and everything. And when I got out of the army in '71, I just threw it in the box. I didn't even read it. And it's all these glorified things about I appreciate your you know your service and. A, you're a great guy. And then at the bottom is Richard Nixon. My <laughs> boy, I didn't even know I had that. I'm going, thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. So, Julie, coming from Long Beach and what you do. Now, we met a year ago? Yeah. At, at Muscle did. Beach. I was walking down and this lady, you know, she was bothering me, obviously. No, she was on stage. <laughs> she was on stage and she had a great presence. I'm like, she's got a great smile. I like her hair. She just looks like you're having fun on there. And and Brett, you know what that's like to be there. It's just a lot of work doing all that stuff. But I liked her presence, and I'm like, I gotta meet her. And then she, I'm like, she's gonna win. And then she was going up against Jennifer Henry. Oh and I'm like, well, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, uh, you won your, your well, I'm stop, I'm gonna stop talking. Talk about how we met and where we, what, when you, what happened when you won? I was excited. <laughs> well, I won, yeah, I won first in my class. I didn't win overall, so I mean, was kind of bummed, but I was my really co-host beat her. Yeah, she did. I was so happy for her. She looked amazing. So, yeah, I won. Um, I won first place, and I was really excited. Wait, and you, you beat Jennifer? No, 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 I won first oh. for my class. We were oh. in different classes. Oh, I'm in the yeah. and then they brought him out class. afterwards. I know Jennifer. Yes, yeah, so John knows I'm Jennifer. <laughs> I won the short class, but oh. I didn't win the overall. But. It was awesome. Talk about that experience and your eating and how you got into fitness. Ooh, my eating. It's a lot of discipline to compete. It's very restricted. It's all lean proteins, healthy, complex carbs, veggies. It's very, you just have to be extremely disciplined. And your workout's very specific. And it's a lot of dedication. It's a lot of discipline. That was actually my fourth competition that I went to. And um, it was my first non-NPC show and I really liked it because just the whole venue it was just it was totally different uh, there was no politics involved so it was a lot different than any typical NPC show so it was awesome and I met Brian so that was one of the best things and it Brett yeah. tell him what NBC uh, NPC means and then competing at Muscle Beach why is that popular it's usually during the holidays 
Yeah, well, you have three exposure. shows. You have three major shows on the holidays. Mm-hmm. We have Labor Day, we have Fourth of July, and Memorial Day weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're always, they're a fun show because they're very classic, you know? Yeah. They've been around for years. It's outdoors. Like you said, it's a totally different venue compared to other MPCs. Mm-hmm. Uh, MPC is National of Z Committee, so mm-hmm. there's multiple organizations within the bodybuilding industry. But that one is, um, they've been around for years, and yeah. uh, it's just, it's very historic. It so is. it's just a really fun event to go to. It was fun. Can yeah. I ask a question about uh, when we did the Hollywood Film Festival? Uh-huh. Uh, Jennifer was working on that. Was she uh, working out at that time? Oh, yeah. She was? Yes. Because she looks a whole lot muscular and, and chiseled now than she well, did. Well, she's, she's slimmed down now. Yeah. Matter of fact, she has a show coming this weekend in uh, Burbank, so I'm going to go out and support her. Nice. Yeah. Oh, she says hi, by the way, too. Oh. She called this morning. Cool. <laughs> Susan, talk about are my favorite vodka in the world. <laughs> now, here's the thing. You What you don't know, uh, the reason I chose this is because the women liked it. And why do women in fitness like vodka? It's low kale. Yeah. No yes. Low-kale. Yeah. You get to explain that. And it's actually very, very smooth. It's very, very good. When we have a drink, we call the skinny bitch. Oh. And that's, uh, Would you just call me? That's <laughs> 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 that used to be my nickname. <laughs> 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 no, we mix it with water, and vodka often, you know, doesn't necessarily taste good with water, but ours right. does. It's such a smooth vodka that, you know, it doesn't, it, you know, the what makes a vodka a vodka is colorless, odorless, and tasteless. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've tried a lot of vodkas, and provincial really fits that better than any other vodka I've tried. It really is an, just an amazing vodka. Talk about the light. Isn't this great when it flashes on and off like this? <laughs> it's special. This is, so this is what caught a lot of our attention at Celebrity Connected when we had it over there. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's just an LED light. You can program it to flash or to fade, or you can leave it on a solid color. And it really, the, the design of the bottle uh, lends itself to it, having the, uh, the um, frosted surface really helps bring out the color in the light, mm-hmm. so it works really well. Paul who uh, owns the company, has done a really good job of creating the brand. And, and Paul was here two weeks ago, and we had fun, didn't we? Yeah, Paul's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he and I went to school together from kindergarten through grade 12. And we're from the same hometown. We're both Russian Canadians. And uh, Paul created the vodka himself. He grows the grain on his own farm. He was a farmer. He oh, studied, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a yeah. farmer and studied engineering. Distillation was a specialty in engineering. And uh, he got tired of doing engineering, went back to farming, and there was a drought. And so they dug, they, they started drilling for water on the land so they could irrigate the land. Otherwise, they'd have no crop. And they found a glacial aquifer, which is three million year old water trapped mm. 30 feet underground, it's protected, amazing. you know, too far underground for the chemicals to seep into. Yep. It's just this pristine water source. Yeah. And that, there goes the taste. Yeah, the best thing about this is it's very smooth and it's, it doesn't yes. really burn when you, when you drink it. It's very smooth and, and it's quite delicious. Thank so. you. And it also, my favorite thing is apple pie, as everybody knows who knows me. Mm-hmm. But you've oh, got an apple do. liqueur. Apple. Yeah, yeah, you're going to bring me my apple pie. <laughs> Paul, Paul has an apple pie liqueur, which it's literally delicious. Sm- nice. it smells and tastes wow. exactly like apple pie. And it, oh my God, it's delicious. Uh, and I wouldn't you, give it to you, anybody. How do you get that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not here yet. There are two bottles in the U.S. Brian uh-huh. has one, and I have the other, and All neither right. of us is sharing, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a blueberry. There's also a blueberry apple, uh, blueberry pie. And what was really interesting was in the uh, recent awards, the uh, Global Spirit Awards in Vegas, we put up the apple pie against the blueberry pie here in the U.S. And everyone I know who've tasted both prefer the apple pie. But interestingly enough, the blueberry pie took gold and the apple pie, which competed, they competed against each other in the same, uh, same category. And the blueberry got gold and the apple pie got silver. Oh, wow. Paul had four, uh, four products in that competition and medaled either gold or silver with both, with all four. With all four. So, Brett yeah. um, and a bunch of the other girls, I'm, I'm, I'm thanking them because I saw this a year ago at the Emmy Suite for Celebrity Connected. We have to talk about Celebrity Connected. Um, and what happens is if I have enough people that come in and see a lot of the, the vendors there because what happens at a gifting suite I was telling you about. A lot of vendors will bring their product there and they give it out to celebrities. 
this is one of the products that I like. And when I find something, I really go out and I want to champion it. So until the day I die, and I'm not dying until I'm 130, because I already know, because I'm a Sebastian, <laughs> I will champion all these things. But it's one of those things where it was about the taste. It was about that the women in the fitness side liked it, which was most important to me. And then women champion something that they really appreciate. That. And that's what caught me on that. And then when I went over and talked to Paul, I liked him. And now we're, we're really good friends. And now I got to go ice fishing with him in Canada <laughs> the month of February. I'm going to freeze my butt off. But I'm going. I'm going. We're going to have vodka. So there's not going to be any record of me getting drunk or anything like that. But I'm sure I will be. And that's how we chose this. So that's important. So Brett, what have you been doing? I've been missing you. And you also brought Celsius. I did, I did. Um, yep, no, I know I miss when I get to co-host with you, but uh, yeah, I've just been She actually a lot. crashed the party because I had enough people. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had seven on before, but I, I wanted to have a rod and she brought, I brought what did yes. you bring? Yeah, so um, Celsius is great. I, it's, I don't know if you've noticed it before, it's been around for about 11 years, but um, the, they changed the packaging as of January, but it's it's a fitness drink, so it's a very healthy, clean energy drink. It's made of the green tea, so you're not going to have this crash and jitters from it. Um, it helps uh, burn. It's proven they, they did six university studies, but it's proven to help burn 100 calories and um, boost metabolism and, and help burn body fat. So it's just like a, it's for anyone really. Um, 200 milligrams of caffeine in, in the can, but like I said, since it's made majority of the green tea, you're not going to get all crazy or cranked up like you might from an energy drink per se so i'm gonna keep them all when we leave well sylvia you're, you're from spain so what do you what do you think so far of what you've had oh i love it i drank two of this already Good. <laughs> and and the thing is you have to stay in shape too and you know being here in los angeles what's what's your take on coming from madrid spain right uh-huh. What's my what? what uh, what's your take on being in Los Angeles, the image sometimes that you have to uphold? Because it's not easy oh. living here. Nobody tells you. Uh-huh. Well, you know, I love about Los Angeles that everybody lives a healthy lifestyle, which I love. Uh, so everybody's in shape, as you guys can see. <laughs> uh, everybody's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's always exercising, eating healthy and you know and then you have all these drinks that are super healthy with green tea and it burns your calories so yeah i really like that and that's the image that we've always seen on tv about los angeles when we yeah. when i was a kid i used to watch baywatch and everybody ah. was in shape you know <laughs> all these shows and it really is like that so that's one of the things that i love about this city yeah susan you play volleyball you know about keeping in shape why is that Oh yeah, I play beach volleyball, so it's uh, you have to be in shape. Uh, you know, nothing worse than, and I'm a, I'm an older player, and so I'm generally playing with somebody 20 or 30 years younger than me. And uh, standing beside somebody 20, 30 years younger than me in great physical shape is definitely inspiration to stay in shape myself. Yeah, but you're beating them too, aren't you? Uh, often, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Is that experience? Is a what? Combination of experience and smarts. I mean. Yeah. Skill for skill, the smartest player is going to win. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then and when are you playing play. again? Um, I have a partner right now, similar in age to me. She's one year younger than me. We'll have a combined age next year of uh, 100 or 101. Wow. And uh, we are going to make a play for AVP main draw. I've played in the AVP and FIVB before. I've not made the main draw, and I plan to in 2018. Good for you. Brett, give your website. Uh, one eight hundred. Oh, it's um. My personal website is brettbowerfittv.com. And Celsius. Celsius is celsius.com. Okay. Yeah. Susan. Uh, provincialvodka.com. Rich, you have one. My blog that you should uh, check out is Rich McCain Superstar People. I like that. Oh. Blogspot.com. Yeah. One more time. There you go. Rich McCain, Superstar People, Blogspot.com. If you're in the rock, you're going to see the top rock people in Atlantic <laughs> Records. Uh, I get things from Atlantic every day. Uh, Atlantic, uh, Sony, CBS, Columbia, you name it. And uh, whatever taste you're into, gospel, Motown gospel, all of I get them all. And I run them all. And of course, I do the movies. Yep. 
and uh, you and I have done hundreds of, of movie interviews or whatever. Hundreds, thousands. Oh man, and um, and then I go on the set, and I love going on the set, uh, you know, because when you when you're in people's workplace, they they act a lot different than they do at a press conference, believe it or not. When they're on the set, you know, the director, the execs, the ex uh, all the people are sitting around, so everybody's on cool duty when, when we're on set. And uh, that, yeah, that's, I, I just, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, we've been, I remember one time, I'll just tell this one story, Robin Williams one time, and I don't know if Brian was there at, at the time, because he's been to many, uh, we've, we've shared many experiences. And um, everybody had their mites and stuff on the table. So Robin comes in. Oh, yes. And everybody says, Robin Williams, y'all. And we're all clapping and everything. And Robin sits down. And he starts rearranging all the mites <laughs> and stuff. Man, just pissed everybody off. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he rearranged. And then he turned one of the ladies' mites off. Why? <laughs> Well, he, he didn't know he did it. He didn't know he did it. <laughs> Boy, and I just sat there and just fell out because it was so funny. And, but everybody was offended. You know, you, you're sitting there. If he would, he's the type of guy, he'd come in and the audio man would have all the mics set and then Robin would take them and switch them on, on, you know, right on camera. And you're like, the audio guy was like, I'll just kill him. When I we used done. to have a thing. We used to have the radio round table. You know, we had our own room. There was 23 syndicated, sometimes 27. Now there's only like three of us left. And then what would happen is we turn off the air conditioning. We turn off no sound, no crumbling of paper. No, we would take ice away from the tables. You know how they you come in here? We take that away because we didn't want to hear the ice cubes, people crunching. We need a clean sound for our syndicateds. So the print people didn't like us because we wouldn't let them. Print people go, uh-huh, yeah, like typical <laughs> black people. And then what would happen with that is we wouldn't let them, they didn't like it because they had to be quiet. They had to wait till we asked the question until, and then you can jump in. And then everybody would jump in. So Robin Williams would come in the room, he would lock the door, we would be quiet because we couldn't laugh. He would make everybody laugh, and once we busted out laughing, then everybody got back then. But when you set all the mics up, the last thing you want is someone coming come and touching your mic because it's set a certain way. So by doing that, it screwed up people's sound. Yeah, he didn't know that's Robin Williams. What are you gonna do? Yell at him? It's Robin Williams. And, and we, the print, and Brian was broadcast. We were print. In the print round table, you could laugh, you could act crazy, because we're going to take our recordings and go home, transcribe, and, and write a print article. These guys had to go on the air, so it was always a thing. Oh God, some radio guys want to be in here. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't particularly like us. We were a wild bunch. That 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 print group. We were a wild bunch, and uh, we'd go to the award shows. And we were rowdy, and the broadcast people didn't like that. So it's amazing he and I are together. You know? <laughs> well, because I I, I like alive. putting everybody <laughs> together. I wanted to make everybody feel comfortable. That's why, and that's why I still do what I do. It works. It works. And then there was a time when I I always tell the story about Robin. Uh, Robin, I made Robin Williams cry one time. We were talking about, um, I think it was the night listener or something like that he was portraying. And uh, the author, he was there, the director and the author was the, uh, of the book was there. And then I asked him about his favorite charity one time. And he said, Doctors Without Border, and that because he traveled to Iraq and Afghanistan to perform with the troops all the time. And he got teary eyed and he goes, I'm sorry. I'm like, well, this is a first. I made Robin Williams cry. So when Robin Williams died, he made me cry, and I, and I never forgot that. And speaking of favorite charities, let's get back to website first. Website. Give me a website. Uh, it's uh, www.nohatesnowflake.com, uh, and uh, we just got the site up. The part of it that we don't have up yet is the donation part. You can donate to uh, get your pen, and 25% um, goes to ACLU. The other 25% goes to the Southern Poverty Law Center. They're the ones who keep track of all the hate groups in, in America. And last year we did a short film called American Hate, mm. The Black Legion, and it's about a um, white supremacist uh, clan that kidnaps a young black man and his uh, girlfriend uh, to try and force him to commit. He's a uh, 
uh, commit to that he's a, a terrorist with the uh, uh, one of the terrorist organizations. So uh, th from that film, uh, I started uh, getting more into uh, the hate uh, with uh, Steve Bannon and all everything that he spewed out with Breitbart, and then we started getting the idea of the pens. And it's just a little thing. It's just a little thing, but at least when you wear it. You don't have to say anything. People can see it and understand what that means and what you believe in. So, Julie, you have a website yet? You're working on it. I'm working on it. But okay. you can follow me on Instagram. What's Coach that? Coach underscore Jules, J-U-L-E-S underscore. Actually, I forgot. I do have a website. I knew you <laughs> did. <laughs> because I have a bikini line. Ah, Ooh. of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> With my sister. Uh, it's called swimbyjudith.com. Ah, it made you think about it, yeah. didn't uh -huh. it? Uh-huh. <laughs> the best thing that I like about her is she sounds like my mother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> only, <laughs> only younger. Uh, my mother's Spanish. She's from Malaga, Malaga, Spain. So ah. um, we, our roots are, uh, I used to live there when I was a kid. So, like, in, and Madrid, Madrid and Barcelona. So uh, it's just marvelous, marvelous country. So I remind him to his mom. <laughs> well, oh. when, when she was younger, I guess. Uh, Sean, talk about your, 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 one of your favorite charities and why you have it, because I, I like it. The charity, well, it's not really a charity. It, it's uh, Southern Poverty Law Center uh, and ACLU. Uh, those are the top two, uh, uh, you might say, charities that really fight hate and are a good cause helping people uh, who have no voice. And uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center is uh, uh, they send me emails almost every week in regards to what they're fighting nowadays and and um, uh, keeping track of uh, all the the hate groups uh, within uh, America and they do they I mean they, they're extensive research that they do and and they also protect and they defend people who don't have a voice and are being uh, unjustly uh, um, you know unjustly uh, persecuted. And you got something from the city. That's what I was talking about. Why? Oh, I, I, you know, I just happened to have it down here. I, I, I made him bring it. <laughs> what a coincidence. You know, you, know how much, you know how much this thing costs? <laughs> this is, it's all the colors in the, it's embossed. No, this is from uh, a hold, little. Hold it up straight so the camera uh, can see it. This is just they a little thank you. Uh, I didn't do much to get this. Uh, but this is from the Sunshine Kids and uh, where I work, um, uh, Sheraton Universal, the hotel there. Uh, I'm their uh, director of security there, so I work closely with the police department. And uh, the thing about this is that every year the police and C.W. Bailey, uh, who's an actor, prominent actor, he organizes this uh, to take care of young kids who have cancer and are fighting for their lives. And the police come out and uh, hundreds of police officers with their squad cars and their motorcycles and they big, do a big ceremony and they take these kids in their squad cars to the studios and around town and they make them honorary um, uh, police officers for a day and uh, you, you just don't know how much time they have left and usually this is the biggest the most important event of their lives so it's a great uh, charity yeah so I, I'm very honored to get this so Sylvia do you have a charity that you liked in Spain or one here well I mean I love all the charities but uh, I don't have a charity myself, but I'm doing a short film about uh, bullying. Oh, yes, yep. Uh, because, you know, we don't realize how bad bullying gets. Are you like, talking about bullfighting? No, bullying. Like oh, uh, bullying, when a yes. kid, uh, yeah. you know? Uh, or just a kid or another. My, uh, my daughter's boyfriend just directed a movie about bullying. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I want to see that. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we don't realize the when I was doing research, the number of, of suicide cases every year yep. for bullying yep. is insane. And those are the suicide cases, but then the other people who don't get that far, the stress that bullying creates, it gives you cancer and like so many, Absolutely. so many illnesses that I think it's something that parents should educate their kids the right way so this doesn't happen. and and teachers and people at school they have to take you know they have to do something about it because well I have a family member that suffered bullying really badly 
And the teachers were like, well, what do you want us to do? I'm like, for real, you know? So I would like to, to put that in people's head, you know, how important this is and how we mm -hmm. have to fight it. I, I, just to add something to that, um, uh, when I came back from Spain, I was going into the 10th grade, and um, uh, the kids knew that uh, I lived in Spain, that my mother uh, had an accent. So every day on the playground, they would scream and, and yell and taught me, kid from Spain, go home. And this was a chant that every day they would chant. And, and it really affected me as a kid. Same. And, and the same thing to make fun of my mom because she had an accent. And I always remembered that because that's, you know, it, the hate goes back a long ways. And, and that's something that's ingrained in you and you can feel that still. Yeah, and what you, you, what you were saying about hate, you know, these people who bully other people, they hate themselves, you know, that's the problem. They, they have a horrible life and they have to put that into someone else. So people who get bullied, they have to understand that it's not about them, it's about the other person's own problems. So yeah, it's just really sad. Like when I see something like this, like that, I feel sad for the person who is actually the bully because I know he's doing that because he has a lot of problems. So, can I comment on that? Yeah. When my daughter was in elementary school, oh, I that's used right. to volunteer at her school on uh, usually on Friday afternoons uh, for two hours over lunch hour because they would stagger the lunches for the different grades. Mm -hmm. And I would go on the far end of the playground all the time. And whenever there'd be a fight breakout or you know. Yeah. I would take all the kids and I would take them through a process where I would allow everyone to say everything they had they wanted to say one at a time. Uh -huh. And the end result, by the end of it, I would take all of the people involved, and so the person who would ultimately admit that you know they kind of instigated and did something wrong, and, and I'd ask them, okay, now how does it make you feel to know that you've hurt this person in this way? Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, wow, I feel really bad. And I said, well, wouldn't it be good right now to make a decision to always treat people from now on the way you would like to be treated yourself. And it would just bring the esteem of all mm -hmm. the kids up. And then the bullies, you know, would be much less likely to bully in the future. It was yeah. such, a, such a great process. Yeah, yeah that's nice. great. Hey, Rich, talk about, uh, you have a, if you have a favorite charity, what might it be and why? Um, I don't know. I've been to a lot of charity events covering as press. One of the ones I'm really impressed with is the uh, uh, Dee Dee Hirsch Foundation. What is that? Dee Dee Hirsch deals with mental illness. Okay. And it deals with suicide prevention. Uh, they deal with homelessness and people that uh, they just have problems mentally. And they have an excellent program. They have, they have the original suicide hotline nationwide and uh, I, I plan to get involved with them a little bit more because every year I cover their award ceremony and I meet some I meet some of the most incredible people. They had this one guy, he was homeless. I mean, when they showed the pictures of him, you would look at him and you'd write him off. He's gone. And they picked him up off the street and got him back together and he came to the award show he had on a suit and tie and everything. I mean, he was a completely different person. And so Dee Dee Hirsch, uh, I, I have to give it to them. Um, they have a real strong program and they got different satellite branches around uh, the LA metropolitan area. And they do a lot of work. Uh, and they do a lot of work with this bullying thing too. And so, you know, it's funny that we mm -hmm. all kind, yeah. of, kind yeah. of chimed in on this, but the Dee Dee Hirsch Foundation, uh, yeah, that would probably be uh, number one on my list of charity. Susan? I, I think, you know, a, a lot of what I would love to, I don't have a specific charity, but the bullying is one thing because that's what leads to more problems when they're older. So if we can catch the bullies while they're young and help them to raise their own self-esteem so they don't need to do that behavior, mm -hmm. we'd probably save a lot of adults as well. Yeah. And then the other thing that's really important to me is anything dealing with women's... Uh, women's self-esteem, because I think women's self-esteem is what prevents them from being sexually assaulted in a lot of cases. So anything to help women and improve their self-esteem is something that I would stand behind really strongly. Brad, do you have one? I have many. Um, I'll tell <laughs> off of hers also, woman empowerment, um, building self-esteem as well, and 
I'm a big animal lover, so yeah. I have rescued and fostered so many dogs for the years, and I ended up with seven dogs at one time. Wow. Uh-huh. Um, so that's kind of my little addiction, but um, there's a great new... Um, well, that's not an addiction. That's worth it. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> there's nice. a great new adoption center that's over in Playa Vista, which I just visited a couple weeks ago, and they take all the dogs from... Um, the LA shelters, they bring them in and try to adopt them out, and it's this, it's it's almost like a science center. It's really, really fabulous, and you go in, and it's just, you could spend all day there. And so I got to meet some of the dogs there, so one of my passions is definitely helping save lives, because they're just overpopulation, especially in LA County. It's very, very sad, so just trying to help save lives. And you used to have an eating disorder, right? Long time ago, yeah. Talk about that, because yeah. you wrote two books, too. Well, it's crazy because when it goes back to the bullying, now I, I think back to it, and now that the vodka's cooking, um, <laughs> uh, I remember mine started as an adolescent because I grew up as a dancer, and I was a competitive dancer. So all my friends, actually, everyone had eating disorders. So it was kind of like, you know, just kind of common thing. But I remember a couple of times just walking home from the school bus and, like, kids yelling, like, bubble butt or making fun of me because I had, you know, curves as a young kid. I wasn't overweight, but I just was round. And so I used to hate it as a kid. I was like, man, why can't I just be like my friends that are like super skinny and all this? But now, like, I appreciate having curves, but back then I didn't know. So that really messed with my my mentality and how I felt about myself and just um, body image. So I just developed all these crazy eating disorders at a very, very young age because I was just put in this very competitive environment. And so um, if I could go back and help adolescents deal with that time period when they're learning and growing to their bodies like that would be a huge passion of mine just because I just see especially in living in the city of Los Angeles where it's very competitive and being in the fitness mm-hmm. industry where it's very competitive where you walk in the gym one day and you're not as ripped as you were before and you have people making comments about your body like yeah. oh what happened to you or what I'm like well that's not realistic yeah I can't deprive myself and starve myself to be stage ready and look like that year round and so it takes a lot of training, and that's part of the reason why I don't compete anymore. It's just it's just non realistic, and it's too extreme, and it's just not healthy. So um, there's just a lot of competitive nature in the city. So you always feel like you have to once you reach a certain level for yourself, and also with others, you feel like you have to maintain it, and it's just not maintainable. So just kind of find a healthy balance. But um, I think I just went off on a tangent. That's okay. It's funny because oh. my 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 anti bullying short film is about yeah. a little girl who wants to be a dancer and she's yeah. a little overweight. So yeah. so yeah, it's your story. Well, you know, I'd like yeah. to chime in here. Mm-hmm. First of all, is a lot of us men love you ladies with curves. So that's <laughs> exactly. But I would I would like to relate a story a to a uh, to a, a young lady okay. one time. She was real thin. She was bony. And they would call her olive oil and make fun of her. And she was real self-conscious about being so thin. And at that time, I was a counselor. And I told her one time, I said, did you know in the 70s, there was a supermodel. She was worldwide famous, and they called her a Twiggy. I don't know if any of you I remember, remember Twiggy. Twiggy. I remember Twiggy. And Twiggy was, she was, she was like a, a tree branch. She was so thin. And I told her, as a journalist, I interviewed a lot of models who were on drugs, Absolutely. they would take pills, they would purge and do yep. all of that to stay thin. I said, there are a lot of women in the modeling industry that would die and go to hell twice to look like you look. Yep. And you get to be thin, but you still get to eat. You can have a taco or anything you want. <laughs> yeah. That's a win. That's that. and, and you know something after that? She blossomed. She was like, you know, hey, I'm the, I'm the thing now, cause yeah. there are a lot of people trying to look like me. She was thin, and man, she started dressing different. Uh, she just, she just came out of her shell, and so you know, when people, like you said, self-esteem issues, when they realize that, hey, my body is okay, and there are, I, I tell people all the time. You can be thin. There are guys that like fat. I had a buddy that just loved fat women. He'd go many, to the, many, yeah. He would go to the party and he'd find the heaviest thing in the room. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was looking for. And yeah. he always scored. The rest of us, oh, we talked, you know, a bunch of smack and everything. <laughs> but he was the one getting over because girls would be fat and everything, and the, the, those are the people he was going for. So. 
There's somebody for everybody. Absolutely. No, and also it, it depends on how, like Kim Kardashian, when she started to, now everybody wants to have a big uh. bat and everything because she made it popular. Sure. <laughs> Someone I, I is more popular I than King Kardashian. The White House is calling him. <laughs> Believe me, I turned this shit right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about Kim. Uh, so if you embrace your body and you make it like, oh, my body is beautiful, then suddenly people think that your body is beautiful and now everybody wants to be like you. So. Right. And see, that's what these young people need to understand. Like Sean was saying, a snowflake, every snowflake is different. But when it comes down, it's beautiful. And when they come together, they, they yeah, they, they, they become strong. When you make a snowball, you're actually balling up thousands of snowflakes. Just don't eat the yellow snowflakes. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, exactly. thing is, the young people just need to know that you're all, we don't have the same thumbprint. And everybody is unique in his own way. And when you grasp that, you don't have to worry about what other people think. You can. You can give them, you know, the old F you finger because you okay the way you are. It's just that the way we're, we see advertising and stuff. And I'll just say this too. With young people, the music industry is really messing with them tough. They have a new technology called Deep Dream. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about that. Deep Dream technology. What Deep Dream does, it simulates a hazy a hazy condition and in that haze they put these images in there and these images are not positive at all and so you have um, and you can look at some of these videos now and you know when you're looking at deep dream because the screen is dark and it's either red or it kind of like when you develop pictures remember the old yeah. dark room it was dark with the red light mm -hmm. And I saw uh, a movie last week. I just uh, screened a movie and I saw the deep dream in it. Because deep dream means that you'll see one solid color behind the credits. And they would change the color. It'd be solid green, it'd be solid blue. And usually red, blue, and yellow are the three primary colors that you're gonna see deep dream in. So. You have to understand that these kids are being programmed. Mm -hmm. And people need to realize that, that they're, they're doing that technology. And then one last thing I'll say since I'm on this subject. In 1939, the Nazis changed the frequency of natural music, which was 432 hertz. When you listen to the, the trees blow and, and the, the brook babbling and all of that, that's called the spiritual frequency that nature has. And that's what we used to listen to in music. But 1939, the Nazis experiment, and they found out that if they bumped the frequency up to 430, I mean 440 hertz above, that signal goes straight to your subconsciousness. So you hear about these guys doing records and, and they hear devil messages and all of that kind of stuff. Well, that's how it gets to the brain. These kids are listening to this stuff. That's why they're becoming so violent and everything negative now is being promoted as positive. They're calling each other B's and H's and all of that stuff because they're being programmed with that and the parents, they're, they're not aware of this thing. So that deep dream and uh, digital, what happens is in the old days, they recorded things analog. They recorded it on the tape. Well, analog mean you actually heard the real sound. So if I'm singing and I go, huh, you actually heard that and you felt it. But with digital, the digital, what digital does, it makes a print of that sound. So you're hearing an artificial sound. And that's one of the things that why a lot of the kids now are going back and listening to albums, LPs, right. because they like that crackling, crisp sound of how but things that's really sound. sound. And, and that's why, and it's good to see them right, doing but that. But the digital stuff goes straight to the subconscious and it's not real, it's not a real sound. So it's, it's really dangerous and I try to tell the parents and the kids, you know, when you're listening to all that rock stuff, because back when, when my rockers was doing it, it was real rock, you know. They heard the guitar, ee! but now with all this digital stuff, they hear the ee! 
see, but they hear that that subliminal messaging behind it. Too. And speaking of rockers, unfortunately, Tom Petty passed away. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. yesterday, and he so was one sad. of my favorite uh, rockers mm -hmm. out there, which is kind of sad. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, you know, we lost another. We lost Monty Python. I mean, not Monty Python. Monty Hall. Remember Monty, Monty Hall? Hall? Let's make a deal. Hugh Hefner, one of my friends. You know. The last, I think the last six, seven years, people have been dying, leaving the planet a lot quicker, which is kind of sad, but things are changing. And speaking of things that are changing, saw the, the play Elevator this past weekend, which was really, really good. Uh, my friend produced it, uh, Michelle Coffer. Uh, my other friend, Stan Davis, is in it. Stan was here when you were here. Uh, we're going back again because everybody wants to see it again. It's a really, really good play. Have you seen Elevator yet? No, I read about it, though. Okay, I'll make sure we Very get some good. tickets for you. Um, I was telling Sylvia about that, which you haven't seen it yet either, have you? Mm. It's really, really good. Sold out, seven months running. Very We're nice. We're going to keep it running, going wow. to December. Let's get it over to next year. And they want to have the whole cast on. I think I can get them on because I got all you guys on, so obviously yeah. it must have been a test. <laughs> and, and they, they yeah. fit in an elevator, they fit here. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's funny, but it's it's really, really good play, and they, they all want to be on the show together. And I'm like, I don't know how I make that happen, but I guess I'm going to have to make it happen. So that's got, look for that at the Pacific Coast Playhouse in West Hollywood, California, if you're visiting here. And then obviously, um, oh, I got to talk about another gifting suite. This is interesting. I think women like this really a lot. It's called the restroom kit. Um, it's called Protect Your Bottom, and it does. So you ever been to stadiums? Susan's laughing. <laughs> you ever I been to one of those at the show. I was like, hey, can I have one of those, please? Those exactly. Places in California. You know, Bill Macy, you know, you know, they have these. It's called www.therestroomkit.com. So have you ever been into any of the stadiums or any bathrooms like that? There's not toilet papers, nothing to wipe your hands with. Well, you can have your own kit. Brett, you would like this. Let me you can have what your is, own what kit. What does it do? It's, it's your own portable is. kit. You don't have to worry about not having paper towels or toilet paper or anything like that to wash your hands. Does it have the, oh, the, the okay. seat? Because most yeah. restrooms have it has It has that too. Covered. But as you know, when you get to the stadiums, they don't—they run out of that stuff really, really quickly. Oh yeah, they have everything. So oh, this is those good. are really good, and they happen to be one of our sponsors. And they were at Celebrity Connected Gifting Suite, and I went to go see them at the end, and I liked their product. And when we, with the floods and the disasters and things like that, mm -hmm. I suggested you send them, send a bunch of them to Puerto Rico, yeah. get them yeah. to Houston, and they happen. They're really huge in huge, uh, Texas and in California for some strange reason, and you can order them online. So that's really good. Necklaces. You guys got two necklaces from my friend yes. Michael San Marco. They're friendly inspirations. He ended up getting into a, an accident, got into a coma, and he woke up and he wanted to do the same things with St. Jude's Hospitals. Give kids something that they can be reminded me. I love you all the way to the moon and back. Remember that saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's before my time. Exactly. But, uh, you know, so we had two different necklaces, so I wanted to make sure that the girls have them, because obviously I can't right. wear them. But they also have bracelets that I will wear that's really nice. And he reached out to me on LinkedIn. So all you people who are reaching out to me, keep reaching out. If I like your product, you know, we'll bring you on. You never know. So we've got a lot of people coming in from outside the U.S. Uh, and through other states. They want to be on the show. And thank you for that. We really, really appreciate that. Favorite films. You, I know you haven't had a chance to see anything because you've been busy. What do you want to see coming up? I know I haven't seen any recent. I mean, I'm such a Halloween hey, scare fan. We're in October. Like, I know, but like I miss it. We got and Saw it was coming. One of my favorite movies growing up. Like I loved it, and I haven't seen the new one yet. So that's on my list to go see. And Rich, it is the most successful horror film right now, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of horror films coming out. We got um, Saw coming back out. Jigsaw. Blue House production, which is my favorite horror. Yep. Um, Jason Bloom. Yeah, Jason Bloom. I, we like I got Jason. to kick, kick it with him in his trailer, and we talked about so many things. And I want to I I get Jason on the show. I like Bloom House production. Okay, I, I can make that happen. And, and I told Jason, I said, you know, I'm so tired of the monster chasing someone and by three steps later, he falls down. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm so sick of that. <laughs> and then when he falls, he sprains his ankle. Oh. Now he's got to, <laughs> when he crawls, he crawls for a few yards. It's usually the black guy, too. Yeah. Isn't it? It, when, when he or the pretty killed, woman. He gets killed. I mean, it's just like, I've seen a scary movie, how huh? they make fun of that in that first scene, the first scary movie. Yeah, the guy <laughs> falls down, and, yeah. and then he, he, he limps away, <laughs> and when he finally gets away and he's hiding, he looks around, and there's the monster <laughs> right there. Yeah. And so he said, well, you know, 
And we like to, he said, we don't mess around, we just kill them in our movie. <laughs> and then one, one other thing I mentioned to him, I was on the set of Elevator. That's, that's one of his TV shows. And it's about this elevator in this uh, um, warehouse that's haunted or whatever. It's, it's really a good show and it's got the twins on it, those girls. Those are my girls, the two <laughs> twins. But anyway, I told him, I said, Prince said the hell of, I mean, the elevator was the devil. Interesting. And he was killed. I mean, I believe he was killed in the elevator. Yeah, that's true. Park. Yeah. And he said that, the, in fact, in his uh, song on the Purple Rain album, he's got a tune, Let's Go Crazy. And he says on one of those tunes, and Let's Go Crazy, if the elevator tries to bring you down, punch a higher floor and go up. Mm. So that, that whole elevator thing is, uh, is, is something else. But um, Tyler Perry's got a new one coming out. Boo, Boo too. too. And it's funnier than heck. I mean, he, he told me he's trying to stop the Medea movies. But, but the audience won't let him. The audience won't let him. And he said, I really don't want to play this woman when I get old, you know. I think he should do like the James Bond people. You know, when, when your character gets too old, just get a new Bond. That's so smart. I think he should get a new Medea. That one is coming out. And uh, and then I saw the Tom Cruise movie. American Made. Oh, man. Oh, I, I want to watch that one. It was very good. I, I think it. that's, to me, that's one of his best movies. Yeah, it is. I like that even better than it's his super. Mission Impossible movies. And those yeah. were good movies. But this... This one, it was a good movie. I just, I, yeah. I love the plot. Um, and then he gets killed at the end. You know, when's the last time you saw Thanks Tom for Rudy. ruining it. Yes, oh. I was like, oh, <laughs> leave, leave it to, to a critic to ruin the movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got like 90 seconds left. Well, well, now I, you know, he gets I, I'll, I'll go sit in the corner. Man, I'll go sit in the corner again. Okay, we had 90 seconds left. Julie, what do you want to say to the audience before you leave on your training? Be launching a booty boot camp. Good for you. Everybody wants to build a booty. I, I need. Yeah. Uh, I'll build my booty. I, I, I really needs it. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. so how can they reach you again? Um, phone number, Instagram. Go ahead. You guys can reach me. Um, my email: health coach jules <laughs> health coach jules j u l e s at gmail dot com. So for more info for that, or for personal training, or for holistic healing, reach out to me. Sean? Uh, my favorite movie is Bullet with Steve, Steve McQueen. McQueen. A lot of people don't know who Steve McQueen is. I was I shocked. Know. But, um, yeah, www.nohatesnowflake.com. Uh, you can uh, bring that up, see what it's all about, and eventually we'll take donations uh, for two good causes and to keep the pins going. Sylvia? Well, all my websites or Instagrams uh, for the bikinis, swimbyjudith.com. Uh, the Instagram for my PR agency, SGG Public Relations, and myself, Sylvia Cal. My Instagram, Sylvia Cal One. Give a favorite movie that you like when you're growing up in Spain. And Julie, you too. Uh, favorite movie from all times or from now? Yeah. I love Grease. Okay, <laughs> good. I really like that movie. Why was that? Well, because I love dancing. I'm, dancing. I'm a dancer too. Great and music. I love musicals. And I think Grease is just, everything is just perfect in that movie. Julie, real quick. I like Grace too. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Rich, it's an awesome movie. Rich, your website. Uh, go to Rich McCain Superstar People blogspot.com and everybody's there. What whatever entertainer you like is 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 there. Susan? Uh, go to ProvincialVodka.com and also know that it's available locally at Mickey's Deli in Hermosa Beach. Good. And it'll be coming soon to Gelson's Markets. Mm. And uh, favorite movie of all time was Cinema Paradiso. Oh, love that film. Great film. Brett? <laughs> Brett Bauer, uh, Brett Bauer for TV.com, Celsius, uh, Celsius.com, and... Favorite movie? I have to say Grease, but I'm big into the Brat Pack. I like Breakfast Club. Okay. Yeah. And I'm Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More. Um, if you see someone but out of smile, please give them one of yours because we need it now. And um, we will see you next week. But here's the website, www.youtube.com forward slash movie reviews, the letter and more. Movie reviews and more. And we will see you next week. And my favorite film of all time, it's a mad, 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 mad world. Oh, and wow. that's where we live in right now. Wow. See you next week.
Very good. You're listening to Movie Reviews and More with Brian Sebastian, only on L.A. Talk Radio.